Hello, welcome to the Prophetic Channel. I'm so glad that you are with us today. I want to share a word from the Lord that the Lord gave me today, November the 1st, 2023. I want to share that word with you. But I would like to thank everyone that has subscribed to our channel and have given us that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Also, if you are new to this channel, welcome. If you would also please consider subscribing to this channel and also giving us that thumbs up, we would really appreciate it. This channel was created to hear the heart of God. We want to know what God is saying to humanity. We want to see what God is saying to His sons and His daughters, especially the times that we are living in. When you hear the news and you watch the news on television and, and it talks about all this, this, the, these killings that are taking place, all the chaos that's going around the world, it is important for us to understand that Jesus is coming. You and I need to be ready. We need to be ready for the rapture. Our lives need to be clean before the Lord. That's why I told you in a previous uh, uh, program that we cannot live for God just on Sunday and then Monday through Saturday we are living outside of the will of God. No, we need to live right for God's saints. We need to live with all our hearts because we don't know when Jesus is coming. The Bible says that the only one that knows that we, when He is coming, it is God. So God is the only one that knows, but we are to be ready. Do I believe Jesus is coming soon? I truly believe it. Now, some people have asked, well, if Jesus is coming soon, then why are you giving words about 2024? Because we don't know when He's coming, but we need to be ready. Time will continue to go on. Our life will continue to move on until the rapture happens. When the rapture happens, then the tribulation will begin. What is the tribulation? The tribulation is the wrath of God upon humanity. The Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary paid a price for my redemption. So I will not be going into the tribulation. I will not be going to the tribulation. I will be worshiping the Lamb of the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. So I want to encourage you today, don't give up. Don't turn to the left nor turn, turn to the right. Continue to walk in the things of God, regardless of how uh, difficult life may be. You might have received today some bad news. You might be seeing uh, the uh, reports of the bank account. You might be receiving reports of, of the house and everything else, all these bad reports. But I want to encourage you, Stay focused, stay in the faith, continue to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. So with that, I want to share this scripture with you. If you don't have your Bibles, that's fine. I'm going to be going in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 13. If you don't have your Bibles, that's fine. I want to read this word to you in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I'm going to begin on verse 13. The Bible says this, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so, look at this. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. Verse 15, According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive and we who are left to the coming of the Lord will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 16, this is what I want to put emphasis on. Verse 16, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven and with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel and with a trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will raise first, will be raised first. After that, verse 17 says, We who are still alive and are, are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. What a beautiful day that's going to be, to meet the Lord Jesus in the air. I can't wait to meet the Lord Jesus, to, to see the Nazarene, to see the great I Am, to see the bread of life, to see the resurrection in the life, to see Jesus, the living water. I want to see Jesus. You know what I'm going to do when I get to heaven? I'm going to run to Jesus and I'm going to hug him and I'm going to put my arms around him because I was lost, but now I have been found. I was in darkness, but I've been translated into the light and to the kingdom of God. I was desperate without any hope. I was living a life 
that I was in despair and, and, and chaos and, and depression and, 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 and all these things that were happening all around. But Jesus came. I looked to the Mount Calvary. I saw Jesus on the cross. And I asked the Lord Jesus for forgiveness, for him to come into my heart. And from that moment on, it changed my life. I was no longer the same. Jesus came and he changed my life. The same power that changed me can save you today. So let me keep reading. It says, and so we will be with the Lord forevermore. And it says, therefore, encourage each other, encourage each other with these words. It's so important. The Bible says that we are to encourage each other. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. It's so important for us to understand our redemption is closer than what you think. Our redemption is closer than what we think. We have to understand that Jesus is about, how many times, you know, sometimes, you know, I, 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 I imagine, I, I imagine that God says, okay, uh, Jesus, go ahead and, and come for my people. And as Jesus is going to get ready, and the archangel is getting ready to sound the trumpet of God, the shofar, He's going to get ready to do it. God, God says, wait, 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 wait. Just wait a little bit longer. That son of mine, that daughter of mine has strayed away. But I want to give them an opportunity to come back to me. Just wait a little bit longer. Just wait a little. Isn't that, isn't that gracious of God? Isn't that merciful of God? That we are not saved by our own works. There's nothing that you can do to change your life. Programs are good, but they cannot change your life. All these things that we can do that we talk about, all these things that we, we you know, that we want to follow, they, they might help out for a little while. You know, it's just like when you have, uh, you cut yourself and, and, and the wound is pretty deep. That wound is pretty deep and you try to put a bandaid on it and, and it doesn't stop bleeding. And, and you're trying to stop the bleeding and you, and you think, well, I'll just go ahead and I'll just wrap a piece of cloth on it and, and I know, I know it'll be better. And, but if you're not careful, that, that, that wound is not going to be healed. It's not going to close. And in fact, it's going to turn into an infection. And pretty soon that infection will begin to travel and move all, around, all along your hand, all around your hand. And pretty soon that hand begins to turn black and blue. And when the doctors, when you finally go to the doctor and they see it, there's nothing that they can do to save that hand. It's the same thing with us. We may try to put a band-aid on our life. We may try to, uh, to say to ourselves, well, you know, this time I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to curse at my children. I'm going to be a better wife. I'm going to be a better husband. I'm going to treat my family well. I'm not going to be so, so angry and I'm not going to be so frustrated. I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to stop doing drugs. I'm going to stop uh, smoking. I'm going to stop doing all these things. And you know, it might work for a while. But eventually, it's going to come back on you again. Because the Bible says that we are powerless. We are powerless to change. The only one that can change us is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the blood of the Lamb. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of, in the blood of Jesus. The Bible says this in the book of Isaiah. It says, even though your, your, your righteousness, your, your, your filthy rags be as scarlet as red, the Bible says that God will turn those rags, or better yet, your life, into, into a whiteness of clean and of righteousness. In other words, there is power in the blood to set you free from addictions, from alcohol, from the person that you are. Sometimes you look in the mirror and say, I don't like what I'm seeing. I don't like who I've become. I don't like who I am. And the only one that can change you is Jesus. The church, listen saints, church cannot change you. I don't care what denomination you belong to. Denominations just tell, tells you that you have a religion with God. You, you're, trying to, uh, uh, you're trying to attain uh, a relationship with God. But in all reality, religion cannot save you. I don't care if you are a Baptist, if you are a Pentecostal, if you are Catholic, if you are a Methodist. Whatever you are cannot put you right with God. I don't care if you've been baptized into a church and, you, and they put your name into the membership role. That cannot save you. It's only the name, the blood of Jesus that can set you free. 
He's the only one that can redeem you. That's why your, your works, we cannot work towards our salvation. I don't care how many old ladies you cross, a, you, you cross across the street because they're in danger. I don't care how much money you give to the homeless. I don't care who you visit. If it's not in Jesus, those works cannot save you. I've heard some people say that at the end of their life, their life will be weighed and put on the balance. And then if they have more good works than bad, then they make it to heaven. That is a lie from the enemy. That is a lie of the devil. It does not work like, it does not work like that way. The Bible says that Jesus is the only one that can set you free. You know what the Word of God says? The Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one goes to the Father but through me. Jesus is the only way to get to God. There is no other way. There is no other God. There is no other method that you can try to find your way into eternal life. It has to be through Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you. Don't give up of running the race. Don't give up of living for God. Don't give up and throw in the towel and say, that's it, I'm done. Do not let circumstances, you know, don't, don't let circumstances, it just came in, into my spirit. Don't let circumstances uh, determine your walk with God. In other words, what I'm saying is this. If you don't have a good relationship with your husband right now, if you don't have a good relationship with your wife right now, if you don't have a good relationship with your children, maybe you're, right now you're going through a chaotic thing. Maybe it's a job thing. Maybe it's, it's a relationship thing. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a money thing. I don't know. But you base your relationship with God according to the things that are happening around you. In other words, I'm going to have a good day if everything lines up just right. I'm going to have a good day if I have money in the bank. I'm going to have a good day if I'm walking in health. I'm going to have a good day if everything is, is, is aligned just perfect. It doesn't work that way. Jesus said, you will have trouble. You will have chaos come into your life. And, that, and I can assure you of that. Whoever told you that once you become a Christian, that you will not have any problems, lie to you. We still have problems. We still have tribulation. We still go through uh, uh, chaotic things. But we no longer rely on our own strength. We rely on Jesus. Jesus said, I'll give you peace in the midst of the storm. I'll walk with you. I'll be with you all the days of your life. And we can count on that, that Jesus will not abandon us. So don't base your relationship with God on the circumstances around you. No. You might not be having a good day, but you continue to worship God. You continue to have God upon your mind. That you would begin to train your mind. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, that we must be renewed in our mind. Train your mind. Jesus saves us, yes. But it then begins the process of us beginning to live for Jesus. What does that mean? I need to begin to train my mind. I need to get into the Word of God. I need to begin to memorize Scripture and begin to call things that are not as if as if they are. In other words, I begin to live a life of faith. It doesn't. What I'm living today has nothing to do with my circumstances. If I don't have money in the bank, it regardless. If my health is not good, regardless, I will still follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you. Stay in the faith. Stay in the faith. I want to share the word that the Lord gave me today, November 1st, 2023. I want to share this word with you in the name of Jesus. The word that the Lord gave me reads like this. This president in administration right now is going to be put on a shelf. Others will come and take his place. And what I sense when... When I, when I heard that others will come and take his place, is not just one. It might be two or three that will come together to take over. And it might just be one on the forefront, but there'll be other voices behind that other person. Others will come to take his place. He, he is uh, unfit, they will say. The people around him the news media, 
people uh, uh, from different organizations will say, he is unfit, they will say. But the power of these three people or two people will be short-lived, says the Lord. The Lord says this, I have a man who I have, I have reserved for such a time as this. I have reserved a man that I have reserved for such a time as this, for the time that is coming. I have ordained his time. His heart is pure. When he steps forward, the harvest will come forward like a wild, a strong, rushing water. Let me say that again. When he steps forward, the harvest will come forth like a rushing water. No buildings will be able to hold all the people that are coming. I saw, this is what I saw as I began to hear this word. I, I saw the Lord Jesus at a doorway in heaven. And he was dressed like a high priest. And if you've ever seen the high priest where he has like 12 stones and he has uh, the, 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 the head piece upon his head, uh, that's what I saw Jesus dressed as. And he was dressed as a high priest, but I saw him with a smile. I saw him with a big smile. And this is what I heard in my spirit. He's getting ready to come. He's getting ready to come. The war will intensify. Peace. People will begin to shout. We want peace. But it will not come yet. I saw more submarines and more ships beginning to enter into the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. God says, I will expose witchcraft demonic plans in the White House. There is a spiritual battle that is taking place that will determine the next four years. Hidden agendas, hidden plans, hidden voices. God says, I will expose it. I will expose everything. My power is coming. And it will start from the highest court in the land and will move to the Oval Office. And it will penetrate all the offices. Congress and Senate will change. They will come together where they make decisions on the floor and they will begin to worship me. And they will begin to praise me. I'm coming to you, says the Lord. I'm coming to your family in a new way. I have those that have sought me, those that have looked for me on your understanding and in your knowledge. But God says, I'm about to move in a different way. A stronger anointing is coming to break the darkness. And one day, God says, I will save thousands and thousands of souls. And one day I will raise the dead. And one day I will break the addictions. Watch what I'm about to do. My Holy Spirit in one day will move and millions upon millions will be baptized in my spirit. Wow. And one day, a wave of my presence will come and will baptize millions and millions in my spirit. Don't you know I will come to you like I've never have come to you before, says the Lord. Before you say my name, I will be there. I search the hearts and I weigh the hearts. I am looking for people who love me, who have said, I've given up everything to follow you. 
Watch your news, says the Lord. They will report about me. I am moving, and one day, entire families. God says, I'm moving in a new way. And in one day, entire families. Wow, listen to this. Entire families will be saved. Things are going to begin to happen quickly. My ministers, I will cause you to walk in my abundance. What you have sacrificed for me, God says, I'm about to release it back to you seven times. Wow. People will drop title deeds of land, of buildings in your laps. I will give you buildings and I will give you what you need to further my kingdom, says the Lord. I will not abandon you. I love you, says the Lord. One day, says the Lord, no more separation between you and me. I will walk with you, says the Lord. Man, that is so awesome. That really, really touches me. That God is so... He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. You are so important to God. You are so important to God. He hasn't left you. He hasn't abandoned you. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you have said. God has not forsaken you. He loves you. He loves you so much that right now He is planning to visit you. Right now He has your best interests at heart. He cares about you and He cares about your family. He's about to move in a new way. He's about to do things quickly. And the reason why I believe that He said He's going to do things quickly because as He's speeding up time, the things that we are believing God for, they're going to happen quickly. What began to take years and years to happen are going to take days to come to pass because God is going to move on your behalf. Those of you that don't know Jesus, can I pray for you? Those of you that think that you're so far gone, that you are so far from God, that God will not hear you. He's going to hear you right now. He is interested in what is going in, what is going on in your life right now. He loves you so much. It's time to stop running from God and come home. It's time to stop running from the Lord and come back to Jesus. I want to pray for you. Those of you that have uh, ran, have run from God, have run, run far away from God, it's time to come back. So I want you to make a decision for Jesus right now. I want you to say this prayer with me. If you would just close your eyes and just repeat after me and say, Jesus, I ask you forgiveness of all my sins. And at this moment, I ask you for forgiveness. And I receive you in my heart. I know I will never, never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for those that are sick, Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are dealing with cancer, those that are dealing with tumors, those that are dealing with high blood pressure, that are diabetics. Father, in the name of Jesus, in every sickness and disease that I haven't called out, Lord, I know that by faith, for your word says in, in Isaiah 53, verse 5, that by your son's stripes, we are already healed. So we receive it by faith. We receive it by faith. And those of you that could not do what you could not do, I want you to begin to do that right now in the name of Jesus. If your foot was hurting, if your back was hurting, begin to move in the name of Jesus. You might have a little bit of pain, but you began to say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. We have to understand that the words that we, that we are healed have to be by faith. Our spirit man already receives it. But it is our physical man and our mind that have trouble receiving our, our healing by faith. So you began to confess it in the name of Jesus. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. That God is for me. That He will move on my behalf in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please comment. Those of you that have given your life to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, please let us know. If God has healed you, let us know. We want to report that in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you that if you are in need of prayer, please call this number 
1930. Let me say that again. If you're believing God if, and if you call, leave a message. I know we sometimes people call and, and they don't leave a message. They hang up. No, we want to hear from you. We will. I promise you that we will call you back and we will pray for you in the name of Jesus. We are believing God for great and mighty things for you and your family. Once again, 210-670-1930. Amen. If you would like to partner with us, we're believing God for a mobile stage trailer that we can continue to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. We are believing for the harvest. We're believing for a great harvest. We're believing for the Lord to save hundreds and thousands of souls. Can you imagine when you sow into this ministry, you are going to be a partaker. You're going to receive the same blessing that we are receiving. Maybe you cannot do what we are doing, but you can walk hand in hand so that we can do what God has called us to do. Can you imagine God saving entire families? God uh, releasing people that are addicted to drugs and addicted to alcohol. Can you imagine? And you are a partaker with us in the name of Jesus. So there, there are different ways that you can sow into our ministry. You, we, can, we have a cash app. We have Venmo. We have Zelle. Uh, we also have Wise for International. And if you want to do a P.O. Box, you can get a hold of us at jjccministries uh, at gmail.com. jjccministries at gmail.com. We'll get you that information. P.O. Box. Uh, let me give it to you right now. That's JJ. CC Ministries, P.O. Box 7620937, San Antonio, Texas, 78245. And I'll have it in the, in the link at below in the description. There's four ways that you can uh, continue to be a blessing to this ministry in the name of Jesus. We love you in the name of Jesus. Pray for us as we continue to pray for you in Jesus' name. Remember this in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, that if God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. Let me say that again. If God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. I release a blessing. I just feel real strong the presence of the Lord. I release a blessing upon you and upon your family right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen.